Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where I'm going to take you through naming amides. These are a functional group which seems to have creeped its way into the OCRA specification and more so than ever now because now you're using um, acyl chloride such as ethanoyl chloride to produce an amide when you react the ethanol chloride with um, ammonia or with an amine respectively. Uh, to get a nitrogen substituted amide, which we'll talk about in this video as well, uh, we do need to be able to name them as products. Um, so, this is the general amide functional group, so this is what we're working with just here. What you can see is we have our C double bondo, just there, so that's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, like a carbonyl, because it is a carbonyl. And what we've also got on that same carbon, we've got this NH2 just here. So both of those groups on the same carbon, so stem to the same carbon, uh, give us our amide functional group. You'll notice um, an amide link um, in something like a, a protein or a dipeptide. It's a very common thing in biochemistry. Now, what we've got over here as well are, this is the rest of the chain, but please notice there is actually a carbon inside here, so an amide has to be at least one carbon long, because you need that carbon to have this functional group uh, feature. And I think lots of people forget this is going to be carbon number one. So when you name the amide, you are starting with this carbon just here, and you refer to that as carbon number one. So anything branched along the R chain or connected to the nitrogen that isn't just a hydrogen is going to be respected to that carbon being number one. So let's have a look at the simplest example I have. Okay, uh, as you can see, very complicated example here. Um, this is the simplest one I've got at the moment, and we can see here we've got one, two carbons inside our molecule, and so the name for this one is going to be ethanamide. Slightly more complicated one now though. Um, what we've got here is some branching, so let's have a go at numbering. Let's not get too excited with this, let's take our time. So we've got one, two, three, four carbons. I could have said this carbon at the top up here was the fourth carbon. It wouldn't have really mattered if I uh, took that fork in the road to the right or to the left, it didn't really matter. But I chose just to keep it in the line to try and make it easy for you guys. Um, this top one up here, remember, that's going to be a methyl group. So there is a CH3 at the end of that. So that is going to be my methyl, just there. Now, what I need to do is keep this naming system really simple. So for this, it's going to be three methyl, and then I've got one, two, three, four, which is but, so it's going to be three methyl butanamide. There we go. Um, you can see it is all one word for this butanamide bit over here, just to make that really clear. Um, it always looks like you're cramming things together, and it looks like you don't really know how to spell it, um, but that is the way it's supposed to be, so don't worry too much about it. Okay, and then I went and complicated it, because if you have a look at this one, Oh, what I've got now is a CH3 connected to the nitrogen, and I like this picture because it shows you the amide group again, so it just reminds you of that, even though uh, we've got my lovely version over here on the left. Um, what we've got here now is a CH3 connected to that nitrogen problem. So it takes our very simple before ethanamide, and it adds on this extra complication. Now, the length of the carbon group that I've got connected to that nitrogen is just a meth, and so what I use is capital N hyphen methyl. Now what that denotes is that the methyl isn't somewhere here on this chain over here. It tells me that the methyl is on the nitrogen. Now branching of that chain, not going to cover that at A level in any way, shape or form. But this is an example of an N-substituted amide. So let me make this naming process really clear for you. Okay, so there's the name typed in nice and clear. And what we've got is to begin with the N-methyl bit is because of this bit just here. And that N tells me that the methyl is on the nitrogen. And the ethanamide bit is just as it was before. The ethanamide bit is exactly as I've underlined here, but I'll just extend those lines out a bit. It's telling me that I've got the um, amide functional group on an ethan chain. And remember, we're always going to refer to this as carbon number one, but I've not had to make that kind of reference for this particular structure. Okay, and here's my last one. Uh, not the best example of a skeletal formula that I've ever come across, because really, um, 
yeah, it's just not great. Mainly because it's coloured in. I think it's throwing me off. But I like it a little bit because it's upside down. So we've got the carbonyl group. And all of a sudden, when things appear upside down, it throws people off a little bit. Don't know why, but it does. Um, so let's let's number our chain out of things. So we've definitely got our 1,2 carbon chain over here, which is the main bit of the amide. But then, as you'll see, we've got a 1,2,3 group. So we've got three carbons directly on this nitrogen just here. So that's going to be N propyl ethanamide. And there we go. So hopefully this clears up some naming amides for you. If you have any that you'd like me to name, then just bring them to lesson and I'll have a go, unless they're really tough, in which case I'll just tell you to Google it. All right? No, I'm only kidding. I'll do my best. Um, right. Otherwise, I'll leave you to the rest of a playlist. And until then, happy revising.